Welcome to this first workshop on augmented reality in uh, Unity 3D using the Vuforia plugin. Today I wanted to show you how you can use uh, physical uh, image triggers, image targets like this, images that you can print out as um, triggers for virtual content that is being displayed on it. So here we have this idea that uh, these cracks that you see in roads um, all around you, this is actually in front of our building in the parking lot, um, that these cracks can actually trigger your imagination and they can be um, the starting point for uh, certain things that may come out of them or may grow from them. So since we're in the Midwest here, I thought a corn plant, a corn stalk would actually be quite interesting to come out of them. And I have two different image targets here. We'll later on see that they have two different um, uh, settings for reliable tracking in Vuforia. This one actually is performing much better than the other one. So you see here we get a very stable tracking um, and a stable attachment of the actual object, um, virtual reality object or augmented object on the uh, target. This one is a little bit more tricky, it takes a little bit longer and it also um, see that the, uh, the actual 3D object is jittering a little bit it has a little bit of some problem, uh, some some issues tracking tracking this reliably. So let's get uh, switched to the actual screen view. Now we'll show you how you can create something like this yourself. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a new folder on the desktop, and I name this Unity 3D underscore AR. In this folder I'm going to use throughout the workshop in order to store all the related project files to our Unity Vuforia augmented reality project. So the first thing I actually need to download into this folder is the uh, sample materials for our Unity Vuforia workshop from the class website. So I click on this link, download this uh, zip archive, goes into the downloads folder and drag and drop it into the Unity 3D AR folder. Can unzip it in there and then get rid of the zip file so that I only have the folder that now contains 3D models that we can use in Unity 3D and the Vuforia target images that we will set up in a database in Vuforia in order to trigger um, the 3D content that we have in here. Good, the next step is to work in Vuforia and I go to the uh, Vuforia website, vuforia.com and I'm interested in the developers portal. So I go to the dev portal link and uh, log in. If you haven't created a login for Vuforia, it is very simple. You would simply register, click the register link here and then set up your user account. So I log in, my email address and the password. And here I need to do three things. The first thing I need to do is I need to go to the download section of the Vuforia developer portal and I need to download the Vuforia SDK for Unity. So even though in the end our goal is to develop for Android and iOS mobile devices, uh, since we use Unity as our authoring tool of choice, we still need to download the SDK for Unity uh, package here. So I click on this link, I agree to the software license, and then save the file. Uh, this may take a few seconds to download. After all, this package is around 50 megabytes in size. Um, it will also go to your downloads folder, and from there we will need to move it into the desktop folder that we have just created. So the download is complete. Okay check the downloads folder and then just take the file from here and drag and drop it into the Unity 3D AR folder. So we have two items in here, our workshop materials so far and the Vuforia uh, SDK package for Unity. Let's go back to the Vuforia website. We need to do two more things on here. Second thing we need to do is we need to go to the develop section and we need to uh, go to the license manager and set up a new license key for our AR application. The license key is necessary for the AR camera that we will set up in Unity and that is supplied by Vuforia to function properly. Without a license key, it wouldn't work. So we just hit the add license key 
uh, link on here and then select development is our choice here. Give the app a name, so Unity 3D AR for example. And uh, since we selected the development um, category, uh, this will be given to us at no charge. We click next and uh, confirm to accept to the uh, license agreements. And here is the license key. We can take a look at this key. It is basically uh, an arrangement of certain characters and numbers in this field here that then later on we will need to copy and paste into Unity um, when we're actually at this point of our workshop. So for now, just um, know that we have set it up and that when the time comes in the workshop where we need that license key, we also know where to find it again. The last thing we need to do on the Vuforia website is we need to go to the target manager and we need to set up uh, a new image target database that stores the images that we would like to use as image targets or as images that will trigger 3D content in our Unity application. You see I've already experimented a little bit in here and set up a few databases, but uh, you would basically just uh, add a new database by clicking on the Add Database link. Give this database a name, Unity 3D underscore AR. So I try to keep everything consistent with my project name. And under Type, we select Device. Hit create and um, you see that this database already shows up in our list. There are no image targets in there but uh, we will change this uh, in just a second. We can click on the database name in order to add these image targets. So we hit the add target link here and uh, under type we choose single image. The file that we need for that is actually located in the folder that we just created on the desktop. Uh, it is part of the, uh, the folder that you downloaded from the class website. So if you go to Unity 3D AR on the desktop, this folder that we just set up, and if you go to the Workshop 1 materials uh, and in there to the Vuforia target images, you can already take a look, look at the images that we have in here. So uh, these are all images that um, deal to a certain extent with uh, these flaws or cracks or um, different irregularities in sidewalks, in streets. Um, and so let's get started with uh, an image like this, for example, that we can use as a target image and upload that to Vuforia. So we hit the open link. And then uh, under width, by default, we would just say one. Uh, this width to a certain extent is not so important as later on is the relationship, the proportional relationship between our target image that we will see in Unity 3D and the uh, 3D content that will trigger. Hit add. This image is going to be uploaded and we also already see a kind of a rating. Uh, this rating relates to um, how robust this image is for tracking. So a rating of one star wouldn't be necessarily so great. Uh, nevertheless, I wanted to uh, try this out in this application to show you that even with a one star rating, we can get some uh, somewhat uh, of a, a decent tracking as well. And we'll, we'll upload another image in here that will have a five star rating just as a kind of a comparison in the final application as well. And then use both images to trigger uh, 3D content. So I upload the uh, second image. It's also going to be a single image again. And I click the Browse button. Um, in this case, it is, um, let's see where I have this image. It is this one here of the, uh, the crosswalk and the uh, cracks and patches, actually some paint remnants that you find in the uh, cracks of the, the crosswalk. Hit Open. Uh, by default, I enter a width of one, hit Add, and um, upload this image as well. And so by comparison, so you see this rating um, is five stars. So this image, according to the software, would be much easier and much more stable in its tracking behavior. So once it is recognized by the system, uh, it was much more re reliable for tracking later on. Um, now, where does this rating come from? It actually comes from image features that are being analyzed as these images are being uploaded into Vuforia. And if you click on the image uh, and preview it in Vuforia, you can actually scroll down and say show features in order for the software to uh, analyze the image for you or basically show you the different image features 
that it will use in order to evaluate and track the image later on. So if I go back to my database and then pull up the other image, you will see um, the difference in uh, features here. So there's already quite a bit more features, uh, much more uh, broader distribution, um, and overall much better uh, tracking behavior that is uh, this augmentable rating that you see on the website here. So if you're done uploading all of your images, and uh, these databases can be as uh, small or as big as you like, as many or as few images as you like, you can upload in here. You can uh, download this database so that uh, we can install it in Unity as well. So we'll generate a Unity package for us that then we can import into the Unity 3D project in just a second. Uh, we need to download the beta database in the format of the uh, Unity Editor. So you click on Unity Editor, hit Download, and uh, wait for this to get into our Downloads folder as well. It's right here. And I drag and drop it into my Unity 3D AR folder, this folder that I've set up on the desktop in the beginning of this workshop. So we are at this point um, pretty much done with the Vuforia website. I still leave it up uh, and open in the background because we need to remember later on uh, to get our Unity 3D AR license key that I've set up as the second step uh, in Vuforia later on in Unity. So at this point, we are actually ready to start Unity. And uh, let me just uh, pull up the software here. So we start Unity and under the Projects tab, we create a new project. If you haven't already created an account with Unity and it asks you for your user information, you can simply uh, register with Unity, go to unity3d.com or use the uh, startup menu here in your Unity software in order to create a new user account and then use these credentials to log in. I have actually already logged in and I'm now creating a new project. I want to go and save this project uh, on the desktop in the uh, folder that I've just set up at the beginning of the workshop. Hit open and name this project Unity 3D underscore AR. Um, this should be in the 3D mode. You don't necessarily need to uh, enable the Unity analytics um, and you basically hit the create project as your next step. Here we are in Unity 3D and we already see a little bit the user interface, how things are uh, arranged and set up. We have the scene window in which we will create our AR project. There's already one camera by default uh, as part of this scene and one light source that's part of the scene. We also have a project window at the bottom of the screen, which we'll use to upload all our assets, our game objects, and uh, other files in that we'll need in order to create this project. And once uh, an asset or a game object becomes part of a scene, once we drag and drop it from the project window down here onto our scene, will also show up in the hierarchy window on the left-hand side of the uh, user interface, where we can later on establish certain relationships between game objects, assets that we use, um, or also um, access different um, elements of our scene uh, individually. You see, once I actually click on any of these uh, elements in the hierarchy, it will change the inspector on the right-hand side of my window. The inspector gives me access to certain kind of properties of uh, these game objects, these uh, assets that I'm using in my game, in my level. So for example, if I click on directional light, I would be able to change the color of this light source, the, uh, the position, the direction of the light, and so forth. And similar settings are there for the camera as well. Um, you will be able to add scripts to that. They will be showing uh, up here if you add a component to your game object. Uh, so you can keep track of uh, all the different behaviors and all the different properties that are um, attached to your game objects or individual uh, elements in the hierarchy. The first thing we need to do, however, is to import the two Unity packages that we have created on the Vuforia website. So we will go to um, Asset, and say Import Package, Custom Package. The first package that we want to uh, import is actually the SDK, the Vuforia SDK that we have downloaded from vuforia.com. 
Uh, so we choose Euphoria Unity 6 to 10 Unity package, hit open, and um, see a kind of a preview of all the different components, all the different um, uh, assets and prefabs that are part of this package that will be installed. We will actually need all of these for our project. So by default, they're all selected. So we hit the import key here. This will take a little moment because there's uh, quite a few um, objects in there, quite a few assets and prefabs that then uh, need to be compiled and need to be added to the project. There seems to be some kind of a, a mismatch in some of these uh, prefabs or some of the scripts that we import between the version of Unity that we're using and the SDK that we downloaded from Euphoria. Um, however, uh, they don't seem to be uh, essential components, so we can just say no thanks if this API update um, warning message shows up. And so this will continue importing the uh, assets and uh, all the components of this Unity package. The next thing we need to import is the uh, database, the image target database that we created in Vuforia. So I go back to Asset, New uh, Import Package, and uh, also choose the Custom Package command here, and select the uh, database, Unity 3D AR database that I created and downloaded from Vuforia. Open this. Uh, there's only a few elements in here, most notably the two images that we uploaded to the Euphoria website that are enclosed in that uh, database. So I hit import and uh, these elements will be added to my uh, assets collection in the project window. Good. First thing that we need to do, there's also three steps that we need to follow in Unity. The first thing we need to do is we actually need to place the image target in our scene um, and basically develop our application around that. So we go to Vuforia in the Assets folder and then Prefabs and choose the Image Target Prefab. We drag and drop onto the um, scene window. Now a prefab is basically a blueprint that allows us to make it more specific to our needs in our application. In this case, uh, adding the uh, image uh, target that we want to use in our application and the dimensions that we have set up in Vuforia. Uh, so maybe let's do that first. After dragging the image target onto the scene window, um, I click on the image target in the hierarchy to bring up the uh, different properties of that, um, of that asset that I'm using right here. And I first reset the position so that it sits at the origin of my world. So I go to position and put for x, y, and z, 0, 0, 0, which pushes it to the center of the uh, Cartesian uh, coordinate system, the 3D coordinate system that we have on our stage. And uh, that will make it a little bit easier later on to um, place other, especially 3D objects, in relation to that image target that we're using. The next thing that I need to do is I need to specify the uh, target image that I want to attach to that. So which image should tra trigger our 3D content eventually? And I do this by again having the image target selected in the hierarchy window on the left, go to the properties on the right, and then look at the image target behavior script. First thing that I need to choose here is the, the corresponding database, which is Unity 3D AR. And then within that database, I need to choose the specific image target. And I would like to do um, two image targets. So I set up this one as the first image target, and then I will do the same process again, setting up another image target so that we have two image targets that will trigger 3D content. So I choose the first image in that database. And by default, it should actually show up uh, here already on the stage. Uh, but it, it doesn't. And so um, there's a, a little kink in, in the software or the way that these image targets are handled that we also need to fix uh, since we're already at this part of the, the development of our application. And we can fix this by going back to the project window, clicking on assets, go to the top level of our assets, go to the editor, Euphoria, image target, Unity 3D AR, which is the actual uh, database 
of image targets that we just um, downloaded. And then I click on the uh, image that I would like to see on here that I've actually specified as the image target. Go to the inspector. And in the top right corner of the inspector, there's this little gear that allows me to reset the image. So I reset this image. You see that it actually changes its uh, type, its type of texture. And if I click on image target, then one more time, it should be um, applied to it. In fact, uh, I chose the wrong image here. So let me just quickly um, correct this. So I click on this image, reset this one, click on image target, and now I actually see it. So I chose the crosswalk picture first. I thought it was actually the other uh, asphalt picture, but uh, now we actually see the image target. And you can uh, zoom in and out of your scene um, with your mouse. So if you have a scroll wheel at the center of your mouse, you can use that. I'm actually working on a laptop here, and I use the uh, two-finger gesture to zoom in and out, sliding with two fingers up and down on my trackpad, which allows me to um, look at this a little bit closer if I want to. You can also use these controls up here in the top left side of your Unity window, so this hand. Um, icon will allow you to pan the camera in your scene. Um, if you hold down the um, option key while the hand symbol is um, selected, you can orbit around your scene. And uh, together with the zoom, you have pretty much um, all the movements and navigational features covered then in your 3D scene. So this is the first image target. And um, the next thing that I need to set up is actually the AR camera that is looking at the image target that then will trigger uh, 3D content based on the, uh, the type of image or the image content that it detects. I get to that AR camera by, let me just zoom out here a little bit, by going back to the assets in the project window. I click on Vuforia, prefabs, and choose the AR camera prefab drag and drop this into the scene. And just like I did with the image target before, I click on this AR camera um, asset in my hierarchy window and first reset the camera to 000. I want to maybe move it up just slightly above the um, image target. So it's sitting up here. And I need to tilt it down so it actually looks at the image target. So I rotate. Um, the camera around the x-axis by 90 degree. And now you see also the uh, U-frustrum points down onto the image. Another thing I need to do, uh, since um, this is qu quite important, otherwise the camera won't work, is I will need to put in the, um, the license key that we created on the Vuforia website before. So I go with the AR camera selected in the hierarchy um, to the Vuforia behavior script. I say open Vuforia configuration. And I uh, copy and paste from the Vuforia website that I still have open in the background from the license manager, this uh, license in here. So I click on the, um, the license that I created, copy and paste this license key, make sure that you have all of these characters and numbers in here, and then switch back into Unity and paste this information into the app license key field in the top right corner. I also need to load the data set that is associated with the images that the camera needs to detect. Uh, these images that are in the image database that are exported from Euphoria. So under data sets, click on load Unity 3D AR data and activate. So this takes care of the second step. So as a reminder, the first step was getting the image target into the scene in Unity 3D. Second step was setting the AR camera. The third step now will actually be um, adding the 3D content to the scene. Uh, in fact, before we do that, I see there's still a second camera around, which is our main camera. And since we have set up an A camera, AR camera, we can actually delete this main camera. So we just um, hold down the control key on the keyboard, click on main camera, and say delete. So let's import our 3D content into Unity. And uh, we'll do that by going back to Assets. Say Asset, Import New Asset, since it's now no longer a package that we import, but a singular file. Uh, go to Unity 
3D AR, the folder that we created in the beginning of the workshop on the desktop, go to the workshop one materials that we downloaded from the class website and go to 3D models, uh, the 3D models folder in there. I would actually like to get the corn plant, this corn stalk in here, say import. And I will see this as um, a 3D object down here in the assets folder. So I can take it from here. All the files that I'm actually using are um, object files, the 3D files that I'm using for Unity. These are fairly simple to, to import. So if you can somehow convert your file into the object file format, you can use some online converters or uh, maybe your software supports um, different uh, exports for your file types, then choose the object file format, which is a, uh, a safe and easy to use file format in Unity 3D. So I take the corn file from here and then I just place it on my card. You see now this is this uh, proportional relationship that I was talking about before. Um, a relatively small card will now produce this gigantic uh, stalk of corn. We can change this by, by scaling the corn and uh, what I would also like to do is I would actually line up the corn, the position of the corn with the uh, position of um, one of these, these lines, these cracks uh, on my target image so that the idea emerges that this corn is actually growing out of one of these uh, asphalt cracks. So it's actually breaking through the surface of the, the man-made kind of uh, ground cover, the asphalt, and it, um, it, it grows through that. So um, when I have this corn stalk in my scene, I can also click on it in the hierarchy window again to get to the properties. So if I want to scale this down, um, I can do that in here. So let's see, 0 0.5, just try and make it half the size, might be a good starting point, half the size. And then I can use the position here to reset it first, 0, 0, 0. So now it's sitting on the card. I can move this up a little bit. And if I want to move it more specifically, uh, so lining it up maybe with this uh, white line right here, I can um, go to the uh, translate or the move uh, tool. And then I can use these arrows, these uh, kind of uh, vectors that are attached to the um, 3D object. And I can place it a little bit more uh, deliberately on the uh, location, the actual location on the card where I want it to trigger. You don't have to place objects on the card. You can place them off the cards as well or off the image targets. You can place them at an angle to the image target. So this all depends um, on how or where in the real world, if you wanted to use this as a kind of a real world example, where in the real world you would actually see this pattern and um, how in relation to the placement of this pattern in the real world you would like to place your 3D content that emerges from it or that's being triggered by it. So we're almost done. So we placed the 3D content that we would like to trigger with the um, the image target. The only thing that is left to do is we need to create a dependency between the image target and the, um, the actual 3D object that it should trigger. We do that by um, making the, uh, the 3D object a child of the image target in the hierarchy. And we do that by basically simply just clicking on corn, clicking on corn and then dragging it onto the image target um, so that it becomes a child of this image target. You see that uh, it creates this little triangle next to the image target and it will trigger the, the corn in that uh, instance. So this is all that we need to do. Now, um, keeping our fingers crossed, if we play or simulate this application, we should, um, we should be able to trigger this corn plant in an actual live video image. So I click on the um, play button and Get my image card right here, and voila, here we see it already triggers the corn plant. As I said, it's quite big, so it actually takes up quite a bit of space here. But you can turn it around, and you can actually take a look at it from a variety of different perspectives. Great. So let's get out of this mode. And uh, let's set up a second image target because you don't only need to work with one image target, you can actually have a variety of different image targets in here. 
and um, create different relationships between image targets and 3D content that they trigger. So let's bring in the second image target. And in my case, I would just like to trigger the same um, 3D object. Doesn't have to be, it can be a different 3D object, but for the sake of simplicity in this application, I just um, stay with the same 3D object. And with, for the sake of the idea, basically illustrating or capturing the imagination that you know unexpected things could actually show up or come up through these cracks in the asphalt. So I go to Vuforia again, go to my prefabs folder, and then drag and drop another image target onto my scene. I reset the position to 0, 0, 0. Since I don't want it to overlap specifically with the other image target, I will place it just a little bit off. So I just put it a little bit to the side here. Um, I will need to go back to my database choose Unity 3D as my database and as the image this time I choose the uh, call this power hall parking lot this is where I got that image from um, this image as image target since I reset that file before um, it will now right away uh, show up as uh, a texture for that image target and now I just need to go back to my assets need to take this corn plant again and um, Take a, a look at my scene here. So also this corn plant reset it zero zero zero. I uh, probably should scale that too to maybe this one I make even a little bit smaller. So we'll, we'll get a, a kind of a smaller corn stalk growing out of this one. Um, so that's a quarter of the size I'm using here. And then I use the translate tool again to also move this one over and here. I want to be quite specific again um, where I'm placing this. So if we take a look at our uh, concrete pattern. So maybe somewhere right, right here at the intersection of some of these lines. This is where it will, will come up. So now I can simulate this again. Oops, I forgot one thing. So it won't work. Um, let's get out of this. Quickly, I haven't really set up this corn plant, the second corn plant, as a child of my second image target. So I can do that again by dragging and dropping it onto my image target. And now it should actually show up as um, a 3D object. OK, so here we are. This is the first one. This is what we looked at before. All right, and so now if I bring in the second one, this one, and remember this is the image target that only got a one star rating. But it, I mean, you see it's jittering a little bit, so it has a little bit of some, some trouble to keep the object kind of steady on here. But I, I think once it's on there, it actually does a pretty good job of um, keeping it attached to my, to my image. So here we are. And nice thing is, of course, you can look at it from um, all different kinds of angles and perspectives and start rotating it around. Of course, if you lose the image target, if the angle becomes so steep, that the camera cannot recognize that pattern on your card anymore on your image target will also lose the 3D object. All right, very good. So I get out of this and then there's just one thing left to do, which is to save the scene that I created so that we can continue to work here in our second workshop. And I'll do that by going to File, Save, Scene As. And I call this uh, Unity 3D. AR um, corn, maybe. And by default, this goes into the assets folder of the Unity project that you've just created. So I hit save. And um, this is all that we needed to do for this workshop. So we are ready in the next workshop to continue from this point. Um, I would like to uh, explain then a little bit how we can export this Unity application and get it onto your mobile devices. There will be one workshop for the iOS um, flavor of mobile devices, your iPhone, your iPad, and so forth. And then another workshop for the uh, Android flavor of mobile devices.